Wait, I gotta rearrange these. What? The Greetings, friends and neighbors. It's like we're all neighbors now. I got neighbors in Sri Lanka and the Ukraine. I don't know why I said those places, just all over the place. People write me and comment on my videos. They're from everywhere. That's pretty cool. Hopefully that'll make us uh, better people and not worse. I can't figure out which yet. Yeah, what's up with that? Anyway, we have another uh, apple tasting today. I think it's 16 varieties, 16 or 17, including four new seedling apples, two of which are brand new. They are Rubinette, an unknown partially red fleshed apple, Raynet Thounin, Thunin, Thunin, Zabergau Raynet, St. Edmund's Pippin, Tideman's Red, Sweet 16, Hollow Log, not Hollow Log, I don't think. I looked it up. It doesn't look right. Whatever this is, it was labeled as Hollow Log. Mannington Permain, Sunrise, Rubiot, not ripe yet, we're gonna taste it anyway. Salt Coat Pippin, Coe's Golden Drop, Peace Garden, New Seedling, another new seedling, Bite Me. Oh wait, that wasn't upside down. <laughs> Bite Me, uh, one of my seedlings, and another seedling of Wixen, which I'm already tempted to name Eat Me. Let's get started. This is gonna be a long one, strap in. I'm not in a hurry, if you are, I'll make an index to each apple in the video description so you can jump around at apples that you're interested in if you're not interested in everything. This apple is uh, actually quite large. It's one of the larger ones here in spite of drought and everything. It's got a yellowish flesh. The texture, as usual, is excellent in this apple. It's real easy eating. It's crunchy and crispy and the juice comes out easily. It's very juicy, you know, it's a weighty, juicy apple. It's got a really nice um, acid sugar balance. The flavors are mild, but they're very pleasant. Again, sugarcane is the one that always comes to mind. Sometimes green grape, not so much this time. I couldn't really place any other specific flavors. It's not a super exciting, like, oh, check out all these complex flavors kind of apple. It's just not, but it's very, very enjoyable to eat. I think a very few people would turn up their noses at this apple. This uh, is one of the better specimens I've ever had. Now that I have it out growing in the sun on a better tree than I did before, it's really uh, come around. All right, now let's go to the end. This is Rubinette, and it's a cross between Cox's Orange Pippin and something else. Maybe it was Golden Delicious, I don't remember. It's a very popular apple. These are quite stunted, but since they were completely dry farmed, this tree didn't get any water this year. Uh, that can tend to make them much more flavorful and concentrated. It's like taking, you know, you pump the thing up with water and it kind of becomes watery. It, there's quite a bit of tartness, but it's plenty balanced with sugar and the flavor this year, it has a strong kind of uh, fennel anise flavor to it. And there's other flavors going on. It's uh, much more complex than say Sunrise and uh, this year it's quite good texture it's definitely you know it requires some chewing but it's got a good um, texture Let me... it's kind of hard but it's uh, very crunchy good apple um, i may graph my tree over because it just hasn't been the most amazing tree and even as good as that kind of taste just on the surface i'm not highly compelled to eat it for whatever reasons now this is an apple, I believe it was labeled Norcross Red Flesh. I got it from Botner, um, Nick Botner, who is an apple collector with like, I don't know, two or 3,000 varieties in Oregon. It has just barely some red staining in the flesh. Other than that, it's bland. The texture's already going off and it's just not anything to write home about. I've never been impressed with that apple. I would not be surprised if this came out of Albert Edder's breeding program somehow because it has some characteristics of some of his apples. Overall though, it's just, it just hasn't been worth growing at all. I mean, you could process it maybe into oh, juice okay. or something. This is called Raynet Thunin, or Thounin Thunin, I don't know how to pronounce that. I believe it's a French apple. I got it from the USDA Germplasm Center where they keep uh, apples. Ugh. Bitter, a lot of acidity, not very much sugar, not a very great flavor, just kind of a boring yellow apple flavor. Okay, Zabergal Renette. Um, I believe this probably would benefit from a little more time in the fridge, uh, mellowing out. By all accounts, it improves in storage. It's an interesting apple. It's got, it's kind of peculiar, a little bit dry, a little bit tannic, not super sweet. 
uh, quite a bit of acidity, but overall pleasant flavor and the texture is not bad. It's a little dry feeling. Um, it's okay. This is a pretty decent apple. I would never call it amazing or anything like that. that that's this one here. Okay, so I tasted uh, St. Edmund's Pippin, also known as St. Edmund's Russet, in my last apple tasting video earlier. And it was uh, tasted like a dry, kind of insipid, grainy, soft pear. Then I went to the other tree I have, and they're the same. Genetically, they're the same because they were grafted off the same stock. And I grabbed just a little stunted apple off the tree because it's not getting any water. It's a really unhealthy tree. And I bit into that, and it was crunchy and juicy and completely different. So I'm definitely going to give this other branch time to develop, but hopefully one of these two little stunted guys here will be more in line with uh, what this should taste like. Yes, uh, this is much better. It's much juicier. It's still a little bit dry. It's fairly tannic, but again, tannin is one of those things that really develops in apples that have been um, dry farmed. I gotta get rid of these chickens. They don't even want the apples. They're sick of apples, but I'll give them some grain out there and get them away from the camera because people complain that the scratching uh, sound annoys them. I'm sure it's really annoying if you have headphones on. Anyway, this is really good, and I, I don't detect any pear flavor in this, which is very interesting. You know, sometimes that's the first year the other branch had fruited, and the apples look beautiful. They're really large and nice. You know, it might just need time. Like, sometimes the first year an apple fruits, even a new graft, it just needs a few years to come into its own and produce good fruit. So we'll see how that goes in the future. Okay, this is a label as Tiedemann's Red. I did not try to identify this. I didn't look it up at all. Large. It seems like a good cooking apple. It's nice to have huge apples like this if you're baking because it's just so fast to process them. I bet it would make good sauce too. Okay, this is Sweet 16. And these actually just seem like Maybe they're not ripe yet, but let's try one. Or they're, this one seems overripe. Whoa. You know, this apple varies so much year to year. This year it's just really strong anise flavor. Just super strong. Let's try a different one. By the way, all three of these apples were pollinated with uh, different red fleshed apples. So the seeds from these are going to be um, for sale this fall. Wow. This one's still crunchy. This year I can't get any of the kind of cherry flavors that it sometimes has. It just seems to have a lot of anise flavor. Really intense. Okay, this is labeled as hollow log, but when I looked up hollow log, I think it just didn't look like this at all. I tasted this in my last apple tasting, whatever it is. And it's uh, still low in sugar, kind of acidic, tastes like a refrigerator, otherwise completely boring. Throw it in the juice pile, I guess. This one I'm tasting is Mannington Paramain. It's funny because I just did a video earlier about how this apple performs really poorly in my climate and how that's just a reality. With apples, you get an apple that can be great somewhere else and it's terrible in your climate because it always splits. And this is the year it decided to behave itself. Like when I made that video, there were already apples splitting, which is really common. But now, this year, it's, it didn't split. Well, neither one of these specimens is really ripe. Um, the ones I've tasted earlier, they're okay. You know, I could eat them. They're kind of hard, but there's nothing in particular to recommend it. I, you know, I, I don't know. We already tasted Sunrise. Honestly, out of all of these, this is one of the better apples. Let's taste Rubiot even though it's not ready. This is also cross-pollinated, uh, in this case with Pink Parfait, another red-fleshed apple. You can see it's already red. Yeah, this isn't really ready. It's just not ready. It's still puckery and um, it has flavor already. Good flavor. It's just not, nothing else is there yet. Salt Coat Pippin. This is pretty much a new apple for me. I don't think I've tried it in other years. I have tried it this year a little. Yeah, I, I like that. It's got some nice fruit flavor going on. Uh, the texture is pretty nice. Uh, could be sweeter for sure. I definitely like the flavor. It has some uh, fruity flavors going on. It's low in sugar. The flavor is what 
it's not a very rich apple. I think it'd be really good for, I'd guess it'd be really good for sauce and pies. And it's good out of hand. I, I mean, I would eat it. I don't think that's at its best yet. Let's do Peace Garden next. Completely boring. I mean, it, you could cook with it, make juice out of it, whatever, but nothing to say about it. It's boring. This is Coe's Golden Drop. And I don't believe that it's probably at its best yet. Ugh, I feel like my taste buds are getting a little worn out here. Let's try this again. Wow. Fairly dry flush. It's chewy. It's, I mean, it's hard and it's tough. It's got a lot of tannin, maybe a little too much right now. But the flavor is totally singular and awesome if, as far as my experience with apples goes. I think it's been described as pear drop flavored. Whatever it is, it's fairly distinctive as far as I've tasted, and it's really, really good. I think these will improve a little bit over maybe another couple of weeks at least and I have more on the tree so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a pear flavor but there's more going on. There's something else going on with it that makes it um, really distinctive. So now we're at uh, my seedling apples and there's four of those and I want to take a minute to let my palate readjust a little bit because I feel like it's wearing out. So while we do that let's go back through these. Rubinette, worth eating. Uh, unknown, partially red fleshed apple, not really worth it. Renette Thunin, probably a cider apple. It's bitter, uh, very acidic. Zabergau Renette, it's pretty good. I mean, it was definitely not the first apple I'd grab here. This is very promising, St. Edmund's Pippin. This seems like a good cooking apple. It's uh, labeled as Tideman's Red, although I haven't confirmed that. Sweet 16, insane fennel flavor this year, anise or fennel flavor. Not hollow log, whatever it is, not worthwhile. Um, Mannington Parmain, eh. I didn't really pick it first to cook with or anything, but you could throw it in the juice press. It's probably great somewhere else. Uh, Sunrise, uh, quite good. I really like Sunrise. Uh, Rubiot's great, but it's not ready yet. What was this? Saltco Pippin was worth eating, a little thin flavored, well, a little thin overall presentation, but that has to do with like sugar. There's a lot of things that go into that. If it's a high acid, low sugar apple that lacks tannins, it doesn't have like a ton, a crap ton of flavor or certain types of flavor. It can have an overall thin, I guess you'd call it presentation, but it is uh, pretty good and I could eat it out of hand and I think it would improve and it probably would make a good pie and cider apple. Peace Garden, no thanks, pretty boring. What was this called? That's really good. Coast Golden Drop. Uh, really, really interesting. I think just the flavor of this is worth breeding with. And we'll revisit those again. Okay, this is a seedling apple. Its parents are Grenadine and something unknown. Although I'm going to guess that it's either Golden Russet or probably Gold Rush. More likely Gold Rush. It fell off the tree, so I think it's going to be ripe. It has some of the angular appearance of grenadine, which is this like this really kind of um, lobed or ridged. Even more, it has even more than grenadine. It's got speckles like gold rush. Doesn't really have the grenadine type of speckle. It has more of a gold rush type of speckle. So I'm I'm thinking it's probably gold rush. I know gold rush is one of the potential parents, and it is an intentional cross. I just lost track of which parent, other parent. Okay, the texture is kind of uh, coarse. It has a coarse grainy texture, but it's fairly juicy. It has a fairly high tannin content, not enough to make it you know, inedible or anything, but probably would make it a decent cider apple because you want a fair amount of tannin in cider. And the flavor is kind of a generic yellow apple flavor along the lines of Golden Delicious or something like that, but not as good. Nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just kind of generic, I guess. Generic yellow apple sugar content. Not super high, but not low for sure. Uh, acid content, fairly well balanced. If anything, it's on the sweet side. Nothing to write home about. I doubt it will improve and it doesn't have any of the red flesh of grenadine. So this is probably gonna get called. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with it. Like if you had a tree full of these and you were cooking and making cider and stuff like that, I mean, it'd, it'd be fine to have around, but it's not something I'm gonna propagate and name. Okay, this is also grenadine crossed with gold rush. Uh, and you can see there's some resemblance here and that's why I said um, that the other parent is probably gold rush. And this also has 
no red flesh or maybe there's a little no that's like a bruise or something This is still a little bit starchy, meaning that all of the starch hasn't converted to sugar yet, and it's still very sweet. So I'm gonna say this is gonna get even sweeter. The flavors, again, are similar to this. They're kind of a boring yellow apple flavor, which comes from Gold Rush. Quite a bit of tannin, which comes in both of these, probably comes from grenadine, because it's got a little bit of a harsh tannin to it. I would say this has a little bit less of that tannin. Let's try a piece from another area here. Very fine grain. Yeah, very sweet. Whoa, the sugar just keeps coming. I need to get a Brex meter refractometer that measures uh, sugar content and juice so I can just squeeze a drop of juice on it and look through it and it'll tell us uh, how much sugar is in it basically. Uh, the tannin content's pretty high in this. Not enough to preclude it as an eating apple. It just depends on your taste too. But enough to think that this could actually make a good cider apple because it does seem like it's gonna develop a very high sugar content. The texture is pretty good. The skin though is very thick. The peel is very thick. Okay, this is Bite Me, one of my seedlings, and I picked this, I don't think it's ready yet in general, but I picked this because it's damaged right here, and I thought, why not taste it? Damaged apples kind of ripen early, basically. Um, pretty nice texture, kind of chewy. Um, plenty of sugar. I, I think that will develop even more though. Low acid, not very much acid at all. Mm. Mm. Ooh. This side of the apple, totally different story. Um, you know, apples vary from top to bottom in, in their flavor, sugar content flavor, uh, side to side. Usually I'll pick the side that's the reddest that's on the sun and it'll be the best. This side though, that mouthful was really good and just made me want to just eat it and, and keep biting it. Like I, I took one bite and then I like immediately started to take another bite. See, I watch when I'm tasting apples or judging things for quality like that, I kind of watch myself as an outside observer to see my biological behavior, like my instinctual behavior, especially with tasting stuff like this. Like I'm sitting here thinking, I wanna put this in my mouth and not talk to you. So out of all these apples so far, this is the most intriguing, compelling apple. Okay, this is an open pollinated seedling of Wixen, and it's the one that I wanna eat the most. Out of all of these interesting heirloom apples here, that's cool, that's very cool. And what's even cooler is this is my very first seedling that I ever fruited. The downside is of this is turning out to be scab. It has gotten scab really bad one year, and this year it wasn't nearly as bad, but it, this isn't as bad of a scab year. But last year or the year before, whenever the last big crop on there was, it was almost a total loss. Like it was just really, really heavy scab. So that's unfortunate, and that may be its downfall in the long run. More points for Bite Me. Okay, finally we have my other new seedling, also from the same batch of open pollinated wicks and seeds. I don't remember if they're from the same apples. I planted a handful of seeds and ended up grafting four or five of them, and only three of them survived, and all three are fruited. So Bite Me was the first one. This is the new one, and the other third one, I, I cut the branch off the first year because it was just a really small, like the size of a big marble, green, bland, no acid, no flavor. So this one was not all that great last year. I just had a couple of fruits, and I was just like, this is a boring apple. There's nothing remarkable about it. It's probably going to get cut off. But of course, I wanted to leave it to fruit more years. It was the first year it fruited. And what I'm looking for right now is I'm trying to look at these and see if I can find one that has a minimal amount of water core. Water core is a physiological disorder or phenomenon that causes the flesh to become very watery. In fact, I'll pick one out that does look very water cored. Actually, that's not too bad. You can see it on the bottom. But... 
this one has quite a bit. It's just like, I don't know if you can see, but there's all these watery looking areas here. And those areas will taste super sweet. Although I was reading that watercourt apples may actually have less sugar. I think they have different sugars. I want a part that doesn't have any watercore because watercore affects the flavor and it basically, it has its own flavor. And that's really, so far when I've been tasting these this year, it's hard to taste what the apples really like because the water core is so strong. This one has little, if any, water core in this little piece. So hopefully it'll be affected less. If anything, it tastes a little underripe. It's, um, Fairly acidic. Mm, there we go. It's flavorful, but there's nothing exciting or um, super complex or unique about the flavor, except that it has some of the crab type of flavor that Wixen gets. And I've tasted in other crabs, including I just got to taste a Dolgo crab for the first time, and it had a lot of that flavor, whatever that flavor is that crabs get that's hard to describe yeah uh, some specimens i've eaten have been very good but i think a lot of it has to do with the water core because water core is actually pretty good let me taste the water core one yeah see yeah i'm on the fence about this apple um, i think it has potential not as much as i thought earlier in the season like i've been kind of tasting them on and off but i keep tasting the parts with the water core and they they are intriguingly flavored young apple trees and grafts often will get it for a while and then outgrow it after a while or it may happen in some years and not in others overall i'd say it can definitely compete with some of these apples the problem is like how high is the bar set you know like you could i could hand most of these apples to a lot of people and you would just eat it and say yeah that's really good or it's pretty good tasting this like this is the last apple I tasted right before this. It kind of reset the bar. I'm kind of on the fence about it. It just depends on, you know, if I had a whole tree full of these every year to, to process and stuff and eat some of, I'm sure I'd be happy with it, but whether I would actually name it and propagate it out, um, we'll see how my other seedlings turn out. It's real pretty. Um, it's got a real dark red color, and nice cracked look to it, like, uh, like a cracked old oil painting. Okay, so if I'm gonna eat a whole bunch of any of these, it's gonna be this. I think this uh, St. Edmund's Pippin is gonna turn out to be an apple like that in some years. Zabergal, I'm on the fence. Sweet 16, I don't even like the strong anise flavor. It's just not a favorite flavor of mine. I usually like the Sweet 16s more for this like uh, cherry candy type of flavor that they get. So this year I wouldn't eat that. Uh, this I would probably choose to cook with. I better make really good sauce and, and pie. Um, this one I would eat, not super intriguing. Definitely Bite Me is the most intriguing one that I want to just keep sticking in my face. These two boring yellow apples, you could use them for juice and processing. This one probably would make a good cider apple because of the tannin content, although that may mellow out as it gets more ripe, but it's also gonna get sweeter. So that could make this as a good processing apple if it comes super high in sugar. Overall though, given the size and other characteristics and lets this keeps really well, which it might because Gold Rush is one of the parents, I probably won't propagate that, but we'll just give it a few more years to come around. Rubinette, pretty good for whatever reason, as good as it tastes when I'm just eating it and like analyzing it, it's never been one of my favorite apples. And the winner to me is Bite Me. Wow. And the flavor in this is, again, like Sunrise, it's kind of this like sugarcane, bland, sweet flavor, but it's just really good and that it's combined with that richness that comes with that crab, Wixen, translucent sugar flavor that's really good. And there's quite a bit of sugar too. Yeah, I have some more of these on the tree, so if something doesn't eat them, we'll get to try it again and probably better samples this one i think is played out there's still apples on the tree but given that they have water core they're probably not going to do that well i think that's it for that one this year we'll see how it does next year all right there's uh, more apples coming uh you know collected varieties and more seedlings in the seedling trial rows i'm putting up some instagram videos 
about a few of those, uh, just preliminary videos. If you're interested in that, check me out on Instagram. And if it all works out, I'll see you in the next tasting video when the next batch of apples comes in. We'll try that again. Mm. Yeah, this is a this is a really good apple. It's just really tasty and intriguing. A great texture if you like that. I mean, it just literally squirted juice in my face. Really good apple, and everything just works. You know, the amount of sugar and the amount of acidity and the flavor and everything just comes together into a really nice package, which isn't always the case. And some apples, like this one, for instance, there's a lot of stuff fighting. You know, there's all this tannin, you taste that separately. And then this intense like pear drop flavor is fighting with you and then the texture is getting your attention because it's kind of dry and chewy and the skin's really dry and chewy. But this, everything just falls right into place. Yeah, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching and um, hopefully we'll do this again more than one time this year, I hope. You know what? I want to taste this one more time. Whoa. Yeah, that thing is sweet. I really want to test the bricks on this thing. You know, the more you chew it, the, it's like a wave, like a building wave of sugar, and it just gets stronger and stronger. Really hard to ignore, like it really gets your attention. Thumbs up for Summarize.